This lesson deals with the direct reading or direct indicating magnetic compass and describes the principle of operation, the effects of acceleration and turning errors, and how to interpret the direct reading compass indications in a turn. A magnetic compass uses the horizontal component of the Earth's magnetic field to indicate the direction over the surface of the Earth of the magnetic poles and the aircraft's heading is based on this magnetic datum. The direct reading magnetic compass enables the pilot to directly read the aircraft's heading from a pivoted magnetic compass assembly. The vertical card compass, or E-type compass as it is commonly known, is a type in general use. It is quite usual for the E-type compass to be the main magnetic reference source in a light aircraft and a standby compass in larger aircraft. The maximum permissible deviation on any heading is 10 degrees. The E-type compass consists of a circular compass card attached directly to the magnet assembly, which is suspended in liquid within a compass bowl. A vertical lubber line on a glass window in the compass casing enables the heading to be read off the compass card. Later in the lesson, we will try turning onto a heading using the E-type compass to see how it works in practice. In the meantime, we need to consider the three basic properties a direct reading compass must possess. They are horizontality, sensitivity and a periodicity. Let's look at each one in turn. It is the horizontal or H component of the Earth's magnetic field which enables the compass magnets to positively align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field in a north-south direction. The Earth's magnetic field will only be horizontal, however, along the eclinic line, or magnetic equator. Even in mid-latitudes, lines of magnetic force in the Earth's magnetic field dip significantly below the horizontal. A freely suspended magnet assembly would follow the angle of dip, so to counteract this effect, the magnet assembly is pendulously suspended. A non-pendulously suspended magnet would take up the inclination of the local dip like this. By suspending it from above on a sharp pin sitting in a smooth hard cup, we displace the center of gravity from the center. This produces a self-leveling mechanism. The center of gravity will seek the lowest point. This means that the tilting effect caused by the vertical or Z component of the Earth's magnetic field is opposed by the weight of the magnet assembly and the tilt or dip will be greatly reduced. Unfortunately, as we shall see later, this solution introduces new problems called turning and acceleration errors, which we will discuss shortly. The sensitivity of a magnetic compass is its ability to accurately point to magnetic north. Two factors will affect this. The first is the strength of the Earth's magnetic field. The second factor is the pole strength of the compass needle or assembly. The weak magnetic field of the Earth cannot be altered. So to increase the sensitivity of the compass, Multiple short magnets with a high degree of magnetism are incorporated into the magnet assembly. Sensitivity is further increased by reducing friction, and this is achieved in three ways. The first is to use an iridium-tipped pivot in a jeweled cup. The second is the lubricating effect on the pivot by the liquid which fills the compass bowl. And thirdly, the liquid in the compass bowl helps reduce the effective weight of the magnet assembly, as liquid is denser than air. A periodicity is a measure of how quickly the magnetic compass settles down to accurately point towards north again after being displaced. Any oscillations of the compass needle around magnetic north must be damped out or substantially reduced and this is achieved in two ways. 
The first is the use again of multiple short magnets in the assembly. In this way, the mass of the magnet assembly is kept near the centre of the unit, which reduces the moment of inertia. The second way is the use of liquid in the compass bowl. This acts as a damping agent. However, when using liquid in this way, there are two other issues to consider. The first is that liquid may expand or contract as temperature changes, and this can be overcome by incorporating an expansion chamber. The second issue is that of liquid swirl, and this occurs as a result of the viscosity of the liquid. During a turn, the liquid in contact with the inside of the compass bowl tends to be dragged around with the bowl. Therefore, the liquid tends to swirl in the same direction as the aircraft's turn, and drag the magnetic assembly with it in the same direction. This results in the compass indicating an incorrect reading during a turn. Use the replay facility to become familiar with the effect of liquid swirl. Turning and straight line acceleration errors can be quite substantial in the direct reading compass. So we will devote the rest of the lesson to these errors and how we deal with them, starting with errors resulting from straight line or linear acceleration. So to begin, let's look at the effect of a straight line or linear acceleration on the compass reading. And then we will look at why the effect arises. Let's accelerate an aircraft on a heading of due west, or 270 degrees, in the northern hemisphere. Watch the compass heading, and we can see that as the aircraft accelerates, the compass tells us we are turning to the right, even though the aircraft's true track has remained in a straight line. Now let's look at the reason why this error occurs. Linear acceleration errors occur in direct reading magnetic compasses because the magnet assembly is pendiously suspended. If the centre of gravity of the compass assembly is not directly beneath the pivot point, as we can see in the diagram here, a couple will be set up between the direction of acceleration and inertia acting through the centre of gravity, which results in a turning moment. As magnetic dip causes the pivot point and the centre of gravity to become misaligned, it follows that where a turning moment can be created by magnetic dip, a turning error will occur. Let's look again then, with the help of our diagrams, at an acceleration on a heading of due west, or 270 degrees, in the northern hemisphere. Because of dip, we can see that the end of the magnet which is attracted to the nearest terrestrial magnetic pole, in this case the North Pole, hangs down below the horizontal. This means that the magnet's pivot point is no longer overhead the centre of gravity. Instead, we can see it is closer to the nearer pole. The acceleration acts on the pivot point. However, the reaction to the acceleration acts on the centre of gravity. This produces a turning moment or couple, which causes the compass needle to rotate, even though the aircraft is not turning. It is worth noting that where magnetic dip occurs, regardless of which hemisphere we are in, an acceleration always results in an apparent turn towards the nearest magnetic pole. In deceleration, the opposite rules apply, and deceleration always results in an apparent turn towards the magnetic equator whenever magnetic dip occurs. It follows also that except for a small amount of liquid swirl effect in turns, there will be no acceleration errors at the magnetic equator because there is no magnetic dip at the magnetic equator. There will be no acceleration errors on north or south headings either, as on these headings both the pivot point and the centre of gravity are in alignment with the aircraft's fore and aft axis. Let's look at turning errors now. Apart from the small error caused by liquid swirl, a turning error is an acceleration error, as any turn is effectively an acceleration in the direction of the turn. 
The basic theory is therefore the same as that for linear acceleration errors. Remember that acceleration errors occur where there is significant magnetic dip. Turning errors are maximum when turning through north or south. The error increases with magnetic latitude because magnetic dip increases. If liquid swirl is ignored, the errors will be zero when turning through east or west. Turning errors are usually more significant than linear acceleration errors for the following reasons. Turns are generally of greater magnitude, which results in a greater displacement of the magnet assembly. Turns occur more often and are likely to last longer than linear accelerations. Let's look at some actual examples of turning errors.